Hey guys, welcome to my new video. In this video, I'm going to show how to do this animation in Create Studio. Let's get started. Let's kick things off by adding a rectangle shape to our canvas. I'll stretch it out so it perfectly fits the entire canvas area. Next, I'm going to move it over to our starting position and adjust its duration to a nice, even 10 seconds, just like this. And for the finishing touch, I'll give it a new name. Let's call it BG, short for background. I will also change its color to this pinkish color. All right, moving right along. The next step is to bring in a text element. I'll drag it right over here and extend its duration to match that of our background element. Nice and organized. Now let's type in a cheerful high and then trim down the horizontal and vertical text padding all the way to zero, just like this. Now I'm thinking we could use a bit more impact. So let's size up the text just a tad for that extra oomph. And then we'll nudge it gently upwards on the canvas to find that sweet spot. How's that looking? Next up, I'm going to switch the color to a vibrant yellow. This is going to serve as a handy guide for my original text. You might be wondering why I'm doing this. Well, my original animated text is going to feature two distinct letters, and it'll all make sense in just a moment. With my text ready and selected, I'll click right over here to duplicate it, creating an exact copy. Now for the copy, I'll switch up the color to a crisp, clean white. Here's where it gets fun. I'll edit this copy to include only the letter H, and then scoot it over to the left so it lines up perfectly with my yellow guide text below. It's all coming together now. And we're not stopping there. I'll go ahead and duplicate our one letter text down and again. This time I'm going to switch things up by typing in the letter I. Then I'll gently move it over to the right so it aligns just right with our yellow guide text below. It's all about getting that perfect placement. Now that we've got our two individual letters perfectly placed, we won't be needing our yellow guide text anymore. So I'll just select it and hit the delete button. It's the moment we've been waiting for, animating these letters. Let's dive in. I'll head over to the motion presets section because what we need is a bit of movement. After a quick scroll, I'll select the elastic top motion preset. It's going to add a fun bounce to our letters. Next up, I'm tweaking the starting Y position from 500 down to 80 to get it just right. And we're not stopping there. Let's dive into the advanced settings. Here I'm going to adjust the starting rotation point to minus 35. This is where the magic starts to happen. Now for our other letter, the I, it's super simple. I'll click on the motion preset animation we used before, copy it with command C on Mac or control C on Windows and paste it right onto our letter I. Almost done. The only tweak left is changing the starting rotation value from minus 35 to a positive 35. That way, our I will rotate in the opposite direction, adding that extra flair to our animation. Next up, let's make sure these motion presets animations have the perfect timing. I'll stretch them out right to the three second mark to give our animation that smooth, deliberate pace. And for a little extra dynamic flair, let's have the letter I tick off just a tad after the letter H. This way, we're adding a bit of rhythm to our animation. I must say, our text animation is shaping up to look fantastic. All right, let's add a stylish touch with a line below our text. I'll pull in a rectangle shape and stretch it out so it aligns beautifully with the other elements on our timeline. Let's give it a name that makes sense. How about left line? Now, let's switch its color to a crisp white for that sleek look. Next step, I'm going to unlock the scale values because we're getting specific here. For the scale Y, I'll enter a value of 2, making it just the right thickness. And for the scale X, let's punch in a value of 25. Let's head over to the anchor point and adjust it to the middle left. This positions the anchor point neatly to the left side of our line right here on the canvas. It's all about those details. Now let's take a moment to see how our line pairs with the text. It looks like we need to nudge the line down just a bit, creating that ideal space between it and our text. I'm going in for a closer look. By zooming in, I can grab the upper edge of our line and gently slim it down 
for that refined look we're going for. Zooming in once more, I'm holding down my shift key to keep things straight and grabbing the line to slide it left. I'll adjust until the right edge of our line aligns perfectly with the middle of our text, guided by that helpful purple guideline that pops up. There, it's all about precision. Now it's time to breathe some life into our line with a bit of animation. Rather than reaching for those motion presets, let's craft a custom animation with our line selected. I'll go ahead and pick rotation for the type of animation, and for a touch of bounce, I'll set the easing to elastic and switch it to in. Next step, let's stretch out this last keyframe a smidge to finesse the timing. With the playhead on our second keyframe, I'll tweak the rotation value to a subtle nine degrees. I'm just going to extend our timeline here to make room for another custom animation. For this one, we'll keep it smooth with linear easing and stick with rotation for the animation type. Fully extending my timeline, I count out six frames and position this last keyframe precisely in place. With my playhead still on this last keyframe, I'll dial the rotation back to a negative eight degrees. Then, let's slide the whole animation sequence left so that it starts right after the first one wraps up. Time for yet another animation. Sticking with rotation and linear easing, I count out eight frames, just a couple more than before. This gradual increase in frame count will slow down each subsequent rotation of our line until it eases into a complete stop, nice and smooth. I'm entering six degrees for the rotation now. You'll notice with each new custom animation, our rotation degree is inching closer to zero. Zero is our target where our line will settle into that perfect horizontal position, onward to adding another custom animation with, you guessed it, linear easing and rotation. This time the rotation value takes a slight dip into negative four degrees. Let's keep this momentum going. Another animation is up, again selecting rotation with linear easing. I'm adding an extra couple of frames for duration and adjusting the last keyframe's rotation value down to two degrees. We're almost there. Another custom animation is in order. Stick with rotation and linear easing and extend this one by an additional two frames longer than the last. In the properties, I'll enter a minute minus 1%. one final animation to seal the deal, keeping consistent with rotation and linear easing. On this last rotation property, I'll set it to zero. Let's give this animation sequence a quick run through. For now, let's not focus on syncing up the text and the line. We'll fine tune that timing shortly. Hmm, the speed of the animation isn't quite hitting the mark for me. So I'll dive into each animation to shave off a little time and rearrange them slightly to pick up the pace. Now let's take another look. There we go. That's more like it. It's looking sharp now. With our left line animated just the way I wanted, I'll quickly make a copy. The first order of business with this duplicate is to switch the anchor point to the opposite side, right to the middle right. And just like that, the anchor is now on this side. I zoom in for precision and, holding down the shift key, I drag this line copy to the right side for perfect alignment. Now, with the right side line selected, I jump to the second keyframe of its custom animation. From the properties panel, all I need to do is flip the value from positive to negative. I notice my two lines aren't quite meeting up when they're in their lowest position. No worries. I'll adjust by nudging the right line a bit to the left so they meet seamlessly. Moving forward, I head to the next frame and switch the value from negative back to positive. I'll continue toggling the values back and forth until I reach that zero sweet spot. Hold your horses. We're not quite ready to focus on syncing the line animation with the text animation. That fine tuning will come in just a bit. I'm on the hunt for that specific frame where the lines dip down, prepping for that elastic bounce that'll launch my text upwards. Here's the frame I've been looking for. 
with my playhead positioned right here, it's time to grab the pen tool, zooming in a bit for a better view. I'm going to create a shape that'll act as a mask for my text letters. Starting here, I add the first point of my new shape and follow the lines accordingly. Then I head upwards, add another point to the left and loop back down to close the shape. And I'll stretch the shape out on the timeline so it aligns with our other elements. Let's drop the border value to zero and crank up the opacity of the shape fill color. Oops, looks like I forgot to rename my right line. Let's quickly fix that renaming it right line. This new shape gets christened as Track Mat H, acting as a mask specifically for the letter H. I duplicate the shape for our next act. The copy is renamed Track Mat I. Then I select the lower shape, right click, and opt to hide it temporarily. Dropping down the opacity for the upper shape lets me see our animating line beneath. Now I'm looking for that frame where the lines are at their peak found it. Zooming in again, I double click to re-enter pen mode. This time, I adjust this middle point of the shape to match our line's elevated position in this frame. Exiting pen mode, I boost the opacity back up. And voila, we have our second mask shape ready for eye. For a visual distinction, I change the color of the one below to yellow. Down on my timeline, I create two empty tracks and place our two shapes there. Selecting the track mat H shape, I open track mat settings, choose letter H, and set it to alpha. I repeat with the above shape for letter I. Switching back to white for consistency. Now is the moment to sync our text animation with our lines. Positioning my playhead where the lines dip lowest and selecting both letters, I align them to start where my playhead is. Playing it slowly reveals that H is in perfect harmony, just a slight adjustment needed for letter I, which I make by selecting track mat I and nudging it down just enough using the shift key and arrow. A slow playthrough confirms everything looks fantastic. I adjust their lengths on the timeline, select these four elements, and group them as text group. Next up, grouping our two lines as line group. Finally, I group all elements on our timeline as animation group. With this master group formed, I have the option to save it for use in other projects. Let's take a look at our animation now. And there you have it, a captivating text animation with animated line effects that you can use in your video projects. I hope you enjoyed following this tutorial and learned some valuable techniques along the way. If you found this tutorial helpful and are interested in more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Your support inspires me to create more content tailored to your needs. I'm also keen to hear from you. Share in the comments. Any challenges you face in Create Studio or specific tutorials you're hoping to see next. Your feedback is invaluable as we continue this creative journey together. Thank you for watching and let's make something amazing together.